Hello, my name is Carla Torres, and I'll be presenting uh, Peju Alatage. Peju Alatage was born in 1975 in Lagos, Nigeria, which makes her currently 45 years of age. She is a contemporary African artist who paints, sculpts, works on mixed media installation, and writes. She originally went um, to school for architecture, but her passion for art was much bigger. Alatage addresses complex social and cultural issues from Nigeria in her art pieces, and she thrives on ge the gendered questions of Afro-modern ethos. So to, um, this is the first myth that I'm going to focus on debunking. Um, African art demonstrates a massive respect for religion and extensive belief in the spiritual world through primitive style. Now, when um, Peju talked about her art, and you'll see in one of the art pieces, she talked about um, the Yoruba culture from Greece, uh, uh, Yoruba land. And in our book, The Flash of the Spirit, we learned that the Yoruba assess everything aesthetically and that they have appreciation for freshness and improvisation um, in the arts. They focus their art, especially on Yoruba religion the Yoruba religion um, worships various spirits under God, presents a limitless horizon of vivid moral beings that are generous yet intimidating. They are messengers and embodiments of ash, spiritual command, um, the power to make things happen. So just keep that in mind when looking at some of her art pieces. The second myth we're gonna work to debunk is there is no such thing as modern African art other than a secondhand version of Western art. And interestingly enough, um, Peju actually uh, aimed to debunk this myth herself. So Peju is part of a larger group of artists in the former Franglophone intellectual colonies, Franglophonic and Fanon postcolonials uh, from the former African colonies have focused primarily on resisting the definition of African modernity as imitative and lower ranking to Euro-American cultural production. Alatage's work also addresses the treatment of female experience as a subordinate. So the first work I would like to talk about is called Unconscious Struggle. It was made in 2012. It's a life-size installation using acrylic paints, textile, resin, plaster, plaster of Paris, wood, metal, Panadol tablets, and these are the measurements. So the artist, Peju, she described unconscious struggle as a critique of the tradition of child marriage. The work expresses her concern that religion in Nigeria is often used to justify gender inequality and violation of human rights. These rights are not protected by the legal system. The sculpture renders visible the vulnerability of these young girls and the need for government intervention. Faced with the reality of adolescent pregnancy, the viewer is forced to question whether such practices as child marriage can be morally right. So this goes back to debunking uh, one of our myths, the myth that African art focuses on um, spirituality and, and religion. And in this case, uh, Peju challenges that because she believes that often, like mentioned priorly, that religion protects uh, the, these immoral actions. This piece is called Rapture of Alarumbi's Daughter. It was made in 2013 using acrylic paints, textile, and resin, and those are the measurements. Uh, in an interview, Peju Alatage explained that the rapture of Lorumbi's daughter can be subdivided into three parts, the resurrection, the earth stories, and the folklore. The entire show is a dramatization of fantasy, beliefs, and fables. In this exhibition, Peju Alatage highlights the insincerity of the colonizer's savior complexion. That is the first um, division, the, re the resurrect, or sorry, that is the second division, the earth stories. Um, so she, she declared that an entire nation is colonized with the pretext of saving it from eternal condemnation or say an entire nation surrenders its will, accepting a position of inferiority, exchanging its mythologies for another myth. In addition, Peju's piece aims to call out the hypocrisy of religion. 
She discusses the death of Christ in the scripture and the resurrected bodies, yet people have been judged and murdered in the most gruesomely violent manner in defense of these scriptures. She goes on to explain that men claim there is no legal marriageable age for female. This is a belief which dictates a nation's constitutions. A man can be legally married to and have sexual relations with, chi with a child as young as nine years of age. Rapture is a presentation of fantasy that Peju hopes will grant the audience an opportunity to examine and consider what they believe and why. So the last piece is an extremely important aspect of rapture, um, which is folklore. So Olorumbi is a Yoruba folklore story. We discussed Yoruba a little bit um, from the flashes of spirit. So this Yoruba folklore story is no longer being told, which Peju finds um, upsetting. She Peju's presentation of the rapture of Olorumbi's daughter is a response to the hypocritical assumptions of what stories the African child should learn with. So Peju stated that we as people have denied ourselves and the world the benefit of our own stories. So this is Peju's direct quote. This self-denial is taught at the earliest state of intellectual maturity to ensure that there is an elimination of self-worth. As a young child, I read books of the blue-eyed, blonde-haired Cinderella, the long golden tresses of Rapunzel, pale skin, red lips of Snow White. I was fortunate enough to learn about Olorumbi's daughter, but I cannot say the present generation of children in my country have ever heard the story. So in this description, Peju addresses the need for more representation of the black female. Uh, the rapture of Olorumbi's daughter is also a piece which captures the exact moment when she is raptured or caught up. So all that remains of her is her essence. Her corporal presence is felt more through the through thought through her thought that she provokes because her physical body is absent as you can see. Her essence is so strong as to identify her as a woman of the forest and what Peju described as a queen in stupendous regality and still sensual. This is one of my favorite pieces. Uh, it's called Orange Scarf Goes to Heaven, and it was made in 2014. Uh, Nigerian cloth. Uh, it's Nigerian cloth fixed and draped in a resin and laid on canvas and acrylic. And these are the, uh, the measurements. So in an interview with Th Th Kozani, I apologize um, for butchering his name, but Peju was asked how she manages to keep a humorous attitude when displaying art pieces with such a sensitive significance and such a heavy topic. And Peju explained that Nigerians in general enjoy a good laugh and deal with the gravest of issues using humor. So she quoted that Nigerians are known for laughing at their circumstances rather than um, changing them. This syndrome is what Fila calls suffering and smile. Um, she also stated that she has to use humor to make her subjects more approachable. The Orange Scarf was inspired by an event that actually happened to Peju um, when she was denied entrance to a prayer grounds for wearing an orange scarf. She was told that God did not appreciate women that made themselves attractive. This is again challenging that myth that we talked about earlier. Um, she was told, sorry, um, but she believed that in the Yoruba land patterns and colors printed on a cloth identify one's culture and ethnic group. The orange cloth is thus not a manifestation of the artist's immodesty, but an expression and celebration of her personal identity. So I just wanted to go back to the myth, um, the first myth, African art demonstrates a massive respect for religion and an extensive belief in the spiritual world through primitive style. Um, and discuss some things that Peju had to say about the, this particular topic. So she mentioned that in Nigeria, the members of the emergent um, are predominantly male. Their post-colonial ruling class increasingly protect themselves with religious values. Um, and these were transferred from Christian and Islamic doctrines, inscribing um, what she called hostile attitudes to women. They simultaneously complicate their positions and um, their tendencies, therefore, are systema systematically negate feminist desires as well as um, confront and marginalize indigenous religious positions 
and homegrown secular dispositions. Okay, so this is my discussion question for you guys. This is just uh, an overall for African art. So Europeans have disregarded the humanity and culture behind African arts, even when artists such as Picasso have been majorly influenced by African art. So I would like you guys to ponder when an action is considered cultural appropriation versus cultural appreciation. Thank you.